Yes. What a rush. That's a uh, <laughs> Road Warrior Hulk, Road Warrior Animal. Uh, rest in peace, uh, Road Warrior Animal. He passed away this week. One of my favorite tag teams of all time. And with that being said, uh, welcome to Sub Podcast, uh, episode 132. I'm one of your hosts. I'm Lawrence Loach. Uh, across from me, I got my guy, Luke Chovisi. What's up, Luke? What's up, guys? How you doing? Chilling, chilling, chilling. And uh, for the listeners out there, uh, Chris is not in town, so he will not be on this episode this week. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing for some <laughs> of you. Um, for us, I think it's great. Uh, Wonderful and- <laughs> thing. I'm always excited when Chris is not in the building. <laughs> always excited when I, you know, when I don't have the uh, debate with Chris on anything, but uh, he's chilling. <laughs> he's safe, uh, you know, and, and we can't wait for him to come back next week. So we brought in our super sub, our sixth man of the year, uh, uh, Isaiah Lorenzo. What's up, Isaiah? Happy to be here. What up, y'all? Happy to see my people. Happy to, happy to see your people, man. I heard the fire trucks or the ambulance in the background. That's what's up. That's, you know, that's oh, New York City plane, living. Bro. That's how it is. Uh, I love it. Um, we got a lot to get into. Uh, this is what we're like at the end of September, basically. So we're we're coming yeah. up on um, on holiday season, and uh, Jordan Brand obviously they have they released uh, the images of their their uh, fourth quarter holiday uh, Jordan Brand releases. Um, yeah. Well, I think it's around like I'm not gonna give you the exact number of people, but it was around twelve. I think 10, 12 sneakers. Yeah. Uh, some classics, uh, some, you know, obviously new, new stuff. Uh, I, you know, I'm not going to like fully get into every sneaker, but they definitely, there was a lot of Jordan ones. Yeah. Uh, One, Luke, two, three, four, four Jordan ones, four, four, four Jordan ones, patent leather, black and gold. You had a, uh, Japan, uh, Navy ones that are coming out. You had, uh, you had the, the fake Heineken joints. Mm-hmm. And then the uh, the mochas, the uh, the non Travis Scotts, just a lot of people have been calling them. Uh, guys, did anything catch your eye? Um, I I've uh, I've really started to like the mochas. I I really like those a lot. The Midnight Navies are just a win. Like they're just a hit. They're really good. Those are like the big ones. And then I also saw these goofy ass uh, quilted uh fours with like stars on them yeah. i like those but i like those for very selfish reasons i'm trying to attract more uh witch women women who are witches it's spooky season i'm trying to get some spooky women <laughs> in my life <laughs> I, th- I think this pattern will help me get these spooky women that's like a big thing for me what about you isaiah i you know what i think uh, with this lineup i think i would go with the the two classics and a wild card here Mm-hmm. And I think the definitely the navy ones, fire red fours, and mm-hmm. wild card. I kind of think is those those purple threes look kind of nice. Those purple purple threes purple look threes, nice. Purple Not threes look, threes. Kinda, look, look purple threes look kind of nice. So I'm 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 interested to see what the what they look like um, in hand and stuff. So that's. I, I, I think with the purple threes, it's so interesting to me because the the way there's not too much retooling you can do on a three in terms right. of color blocking and scheme and stuff like that. I mean, for the most part, you're going to like, especially if you, you have ba- your basic like white cement, black cement. And, and what I've noticed in the last few years that Nike and Jordan has been taking the black cement three and kind of, you know, like maybe switching like the midsole. So putting the purple midsole or like, you know, or yeah. it's red and it's kind of like, you know, so you get a lot of the same variations, just a different color. So I'm, I'm not really like, like I said, as a, as a three person, I think there's only maybe three or four colors of the threes that I can really truly get into. Uh, I do. I mean, like I said, if you, if you have, or if you don't have black cement threes, then maybe those are maybe a, a nice little uh, pivot. Yeah. Um, I think where I'm at right now in terms of Jordan brand, like I said, I think I'm more like on the OG side of things. Uh, so like the fire at four is kind of, you know, I kind of, I look at those and I'm like, all right. And then as it gets closer to game time, like, you know, maybe it'll be a, a cop or maybe it won't be, I don't know yet. And then I'm always a ones guy too. So, yeah. Um, what do you think? What do you think about the color of the red? Do you think do you, are, do people get crazy? People are getting crazy about the the different tints. I personally like that a little bit as a even as an OG silhouette. I like that it has a little bit of a different color change. 
I think that's cool. I mean, I know a lot of people are like, get really butthurt about it, but I think it's chill. And, and we should be able to see the difference between different releases. You're, ne- you're never gonna make you're never gonna make a collector like the, all the collectors uh, happy because they're always complaining about like you said they're always complaining about something whether it's the why don't why don't they use the original molds from '89 or why you know <laughs> why isn't the color the exact color from you know from '89 like it's always gonna be yeah. something you're not gonna make everyone happy with the release but what happens is no matter how much you know people are like I'm not happy the the fucking shoe is gonna sell out yeah. Facts. I think I think what people don't understand is like those those eighty nine molds and old OG release like those molds were so inconsistent to begin with like they all look different like the manufacturing process wasn't even the same as it is now mm-hmm. where they can just like churn out like these uh, that carbon cut like there was a lot of inconsistencies with a lot of Jordans and you know people who have OG pairs that you know are still intact. They'll, they can see that. They can tell you they're official, but they're a little different. So I like I like the little difference. I need to just chill with the bar or shit. I think we, we do. We see that a lot now. And I'm starting to see a trend now where people are gravitating towards uh, trying to get uh, the original, like, 1985 Jordan 1. Like, I see a lot of, like, and I think it's a trend that, like, and I'm not going to say it's a trend, but I think a lot of, like, I see rappers and celebrities, like, oh, I got to get a pair of 85 OGs, like, and it's like, the more beat the better but you know they want it in decent condition and i think that's because the ones are one of the few models that you know 30 years you know 35 years later you could still wear from the original you can't do that with the twos threes fours five six sevens or whatever but um yeah people clamor for that for that original like and i'm just like come on like like you said isaiah like you gotta there's gotta be there's gonna be a slight variation in every model if yeah. that makes sense so absolutely yadi flame yadi <laughs> yeah you see like i said you see yadi like you know i see like uh even uh like john elliott like he's always like oh you know these go perfect with the 85 ones and it's like you know people like if you literally go on the market for a pair like 1985 jordan ones you are in some condition paying you know two thousand dollars for three thousand yeah. dollars for that shoe that's like minimum so that's a, for a dead stock pair yeah i mean and it's how how many dead stock pairs of you know 85 jordan ones are you going to find but like you know it's it's getting to that point where people like i said i and i see it all the time especially with the threes and the way the elephant print is set up or like the fours like you know with the wings and the, and the tongue height and everything people are always fucking complaining about it but it's like you're gonna buy it yeah yeah you're gonna have yeah yeah i think that's also i mean you always have to leave room for innovation too i mean yeah clearly like there's not going to be there's not a lot of innovation on on this on this four that we're talking about but you know you got to leave that opportunity for for them to be like all right well let's try something new with this like i I appreciate like the zoom technology and the jordan ones like i don't think they really i don't i don't think it really works but like i see it as like an attempt at something and i do appreciate that you know what i mean Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah i mean zoom zoom is I, I mean i'm always appreciating as a as a chunky boy i'm always appreciating when somebody <laughs> tries to throw some comfort into into a shoe and stuff like that so man zoom air zoom air is dope so that's why i used to love sbs i used to love sbs because they were more wearable they're more wearable than um like a regular sb with the zoom stuff so yeah man new changes change it up yeah change it change it up switch up the technology and like i said you're still gonna buy i mean i you know i hear people complaining i remember when the when the uh black and when the cement threes came out what, two years ago i remember people complaining about the elephant print height and and all that and you know the average consumer doesn't give a fuck yep. you small-minded niche yeah. market <laughs> living in the Grow up and just fucking enjoy the sneaker, you know, because a lot of times people, you know, they want, and, and, and the shoes only last, you know, you can put them, keep them in pristine condition and they only last 10, 15 years. If that, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like I look at all my threes from college in 2000, what, three, I, you know, you can't wear, I can't wear those anymore. So no. shoes, your soul will crumble on you. Souls crumble, man. You know what I mean? Like everything, like, so I think that's just, uh, enjoy it. And like I said, you know, I, 
you know, I used to hear you talk about this, Lawrence, and now uh, I, I'm officially in the uh, old man club of of sneakerhead or whatever it would be. I've had, I have my fire, my spike, my spizike fire and four separated on me uh, uh, yesterday, mm -hmm. or was it two two days ago? I wore them, and they're they're really clean, not yellowed, and um, yeah, so they did the glues just. It's just old, and then I thought about it, and I looked back, and I was like, "That was an '06 release," you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What so, did I expect? Uh, I've been, I've been, I, I've been in. I, it's just, it's just the first time that ever happened to me. I'm like, "Wow, I'm in, I'm in the." It's like a notching of like for for how long you been in a game when you finally when something like that happens to you, you just like. Yeah. Dude, I have so many. Like, I have so many sneakers that, like, you know, you you want to like baby and you want to, and then next thing you know, this, like you said, the midsole splits and then, you know, and I'm talking, you know, whether it's Union 180s, Nelly, Barclays, Jordan 3s, you know, fucking all of these things that you, you say, Jordan 2s, like fucking midsoles crumble, wear them, get them, you know, if you're going to, you know, that's, that's just how it is. So, um, yeah. And like I said, I'm, I'm excited for, for the holidays. Um, and I think the, I wonder how the resale is going to be on a lot of these because we're in, like I said, obviously everyone knows, you know, we're in this pandemic, uh, you know, people have to be smart with their money and sneakers to me just, just always seems like the sneaker market seems like it's bulletproof at, at times. And I wonder if any of these really, like besides the ones, I think everything else should be obtainable for the most part. Yeah, yeah, I think for the I most definitely. part everything should be obtainable. I believe so. For but who knows? I mean, I mean, who knows? I, every, I mean, I guess sneakers. The sneakers app isn't a good barometer for what is selling and what's not. Yeah, because it depends on what releases on sneakers. But, um, yeah, if you want these like for a close around retail, regardless if it comes to like right from the drop, you should be able to get purple threes. Yeah, like. Yeah, I'll tell you I what. Think I think what's not selling out those what the those what the fives those are not selling out. Oh yeah. my, those I man, can I we give those the like Razzie of the week? <laughs> can we give those the what the? How about what the fuck are those? Yeah. What the what the oh, fuck are that. those, bro? The, yeah, dude, these those. are. I don't know, man. Yeah, I'm not a fan of those, but I, I think whoever did, whoever greenlit those at Jordan Brandy's a wedgie. They should be hung on a gauge. Gentry Humphrey. That's a Gentry Humphrey. Gentry. Oh, bro, <laughs> it is. And Gentry's, it's funny that just the, because didn't, okay, he got his job back last year. Was it last year or I think when, I, he, when he began? And it's like 2006 all over again, bro. When we were getting all these colors that nobody wanted. And we were like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Yeah, bad, man. yeah. Yeah, man. It's supposed to be a, a Raging Bull 5, a green, the green bean, the Army Olive, the Tokyo and the Kawhi 54. Uh, I mean, a lot of shoes that aren't even, I mean. Right. Like, no, no one even wanted those original versions of those shoes. The Raging Bulls, maybe? The Raging Bulls were cool. But, like, yeah. man. But, like, the rest of these, nobody really fucked with. Yeah, no, it's pretty bad. Lawrence, do you remember how bad those green beans were? I those remember. green bean five? I remember. Dude, I, I bought a pair. I, I bought a pair from Nike Town. I couldn't believe it, man. And it's, like, a 3M all. Nike Town. When it was on 57, uh, uh, 3M all over a basketball shoe, it was the yep. worst idea known to man. Like, it was, it, it was terrible. Yeah. I remember that, that era. I mean, like I said, Humphrey is not, I think he's, he's, um, I think uh, the best way to describe it is he's given us a lot of shit that people do not want, per se. <laughs> I think that's a, that's a big problem. And I, I think we can, Leave it on that. I hope everyone, if you want anything this holiday season, you know, responsibly, we, we get what we can get. And if you got to resell shit, then do your thing. Mm -hmm. um, I want to, like, change gears a little bit. Yeah. I saw this. I saw an Instagram post, uh, I believe, yesterday. And it was, uh, it was uh, a guy, and he got, um, he was at, uh, was it Burlington Co. Factory? Yeah. The Instagram's username is, I think, Slim Pickens 101. And he found a pair of um, friends and family Scar Pizza, uh, Scar's Pizza Air Force Ones, and he found them for 60 bucks. And um, 
and it and it brought up a lot of people were excited. They were like, "Oh, dude, you you know, because the resale on those. I mean, obviously, it's a friends and family pair, so it's not you know. I think it's like fifty or something out there. It's not many pairs in, in the in the world in the wild. Oh yeah. And uh, and these you know these fetch you know four figures, you know, and, and we're talking you know three thousand dollars. You know, certain bids. You know, one on StockX. So. But what was interesting, everyone was congratulating them. Oh, man, it's a fucking come up. And then the gentleman who designed them, uh, DJ Clark Kent, actually chimed in. And uh, he replied to the uh, Slim Pickens 101. He says, peace, I designed those. Although I can't tell you what to do if I were you, I would keep them. They are a piece of New York City history, and they represent uh, a true New York City success story. Now, uh. <laughs> Oh. Oh, now here's the, here's the question, I, and I I, I want to bring this up to you guys. If you were perusing uh, Burlington Co Factory or wherever, and you as one to, does, as one does, as one does, uh, in a pandemic, and you happen to come up on a pair of sneakers that you can resell for three grand, are you keeping or are you saying fuck that? These are gone. First of all, if I find a pair and it's in my size, that, that makes it kind of a bigger issue. Like this guy probably can't, they were like a seven and a half. And I doubt this man could fit a seven and a half just by the look of his hands. You know, mm -hmm. the size of his hands were huge. There's no way, you know, it mm -hmm. just doesn't make any sense. So on top of it, like if it's a shoe I can't wear, I'm definitely selling that thing. Of course. You know? Of course. If I can't even wear them, I'm not. I'm gonna. I'm gonna make sure they get into the hands of somebody who can wear them. I'm gonna sell. I'm gonna sell them for what they're worth. But somebody will buy them for that price. You know, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna be straight up with you on that. If they were my size, I don't know. I've had a tendency with those Freddy Kruegers. I kept them, and they were because they were my size. I'm gonna probably keep the same energy. The only reason I sold yeah, them is because I, I, everybody told me they were fake. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, I can't, it's hard to say what I would do um, if I really wanted the shoe. Like, let's say it was something I really thought was dope. I really thought they were dope and it was my size. Yeah, I, I probably would keep them. Um, and if it's not my size, I'm definitely going to, and if I didn't like them and I got them and they were my size, I probably would sell for a bunch of stuff that I did like, that I do like, you know. That's also true. And keep some I of the could, money. You're right. The, res the resale game. I mean, I feel, I feel morally, yeah, I feel morally fine with the resale game. If you use the bread for shoes that you like, you know what I'm saying? Then it's like, I don't feel like a total sellout, which I know doesn't even matter. And we're all talking about this and it's like, and, but in the grand scope, sneakers don't really matter that much in life. Anyway, the pandemic has made us clear. But right. at the same time, yo, we all love shoes. Hell yeah, I'm going to sell them shits and I'm going to get some heat. <laughs> I'm going to get some low key fire, like just some dumb shit. $300 shoes, just mad pairs of $300 shoes. Yeah. I, I respect you that know? energy. Lawrence? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I, it's interesting because I think uh, when, when I hear like a guy like Clark Kent chime in about something like that, like where he's like, you should keep, you should keep. And I feel like Clark is in the position and he's been, you know, in the sneaker game for years and, and guys like him, guys like Mayor, like, it's easy for them to say, yeah, you should keep these because, you know, they, those guys are set. Those guys get shit handed to them. And right. I'm not saying that this guy, you know, has to keep because, you know, it's the morally correct thing to do, especially if, if he is, um, we don't know, his, you know, his living situation. You don't know any of his, any of that stuff. So how this does, is, how does a friends and family even end up at a retail? Yeah, exactly. Well, yes, that was that was the next question. I think a lot of people were very, uh, you know, interested in like, how, like, because, you know, people were like, this can't be real. And yeah, was, because I remember like maybe a year or two ago, I remember that there was like fragment ones that happened to show up at Marshall's. Right. And you know what I mean? So it's kind of like um, it's the same. It's, it's one of those things, man, where um, I don't know, bro. I, I don't know how that happens because there's only like. 50 pair, unless it's like a pair of B grades that, you know, that just happened to oh, slip like samples? through. Like, not samples, but like factory, like defect, yeah. defected ones that, you know, that they couldn't give to anyone. Then they just happened to randomly pop up, you know, because I'm sure that's a thing that happens. That's true, but, yeah. 
for a pair, and it's not because, like I said, when it's friends and family, I'm just trying to figure, like you said, how does it end up in a a retail spot? Hmm. I'm not gonna lie. I'm looking at these, and I I mean, I, I think I don't think I've ever I've, I, before this story. I've never uh, I did these slip by. I never even knew about these. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you gotta sell that though, bro. You gotta sell the shoe. All right, you guys. So you got. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you gotta sell the shoe, man. Come on, it's like you. I'm not saying that you're supposed to stunt. Like you like it, like it, but it's like, mm-hmm. you know, that's. You look twice. That's not even a different shoe than any other gum gum force gum forces. Yeah, they're currently going for like 4K right now. So yeah, after after. Uh... Yeah, I'm sure like after fees it would be like 3k somewhere around there. For I mean, yeah. less I mean more than that. I mean 4k, you know, they ain't taking a thousand. You probably gonna take like you probably mm. pocket like 3500, 36. Right. And, and I, I mean some you know, so that's that's a nice piece of change and I think, you know, that happens a lot. There's a there's a lot of moral dilemmas that, you know, that I think a lot of sneaker people I have, understand. Uh, yeah, I understand where Clark is coming from as like the person who designed it. He's like, yeah, that means that shoe means a lot to me, right? Mm-hmm. And like obviously, like this pops up because of the popularity and like because of mm-hmm. the rarity of the shoe. So I understand where he's coming from, but like, yeah, he really shouldn't. He really shouldn't be just like, please don't sell these shoes. It's like, no, nah, he he should sell the shoes to somebody who like mm-hmm. who would value it at that at that level, you know? He's probably just saying that you know a a. Just trying to tell a dude like uh, the, what you got, like, hey, look, you know, you, got you should special, maybe man. just keep, yeah, you know, it's like I'm not gonna tell you what to do, but yeah, it's like, come on, Clark, yeah, come on, son, you should hold them and sell them later because they're still, <laughs> they'll still be history later. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Somebody no, should I, wear them though. I th- you know, I think someone, I think someone will wear them. I think that's, but at the same time, I feel, I just feel like. um yeah, you can't really, you shouldn't really uh, tell people what to do with uh, sneakers and, and stuff like that. You know, I don't think that's, I think, cause I think guys like him were too, like they're, like they're so privileged in the game. Like they mm-hmm. don't, that they kind of lose reality. They lose touch with reality in terms of certain things. You understand what I'm saying? Like, you yeah. know, like it's easy for him. Cause like I said, this dude, you know, he's got so many kicks sometimes. Like, I mean, he'll throw some heat on a pole that fucking, uh, uh midsole uh crumbled on them or like yeah you know those are that's the type of things that guys like Clark Ken are doing so um mm-hmm. but I think you know like I said I don't think this thing I mean I, I understand there's a story and, and that's the thing and, and it all I think boils down to if it comes in your size and there's been sneakers that I've worn that you know I'm like damn I could have sold those for a nice chunk of change you know what I mean and mm-hmm. and and then there's sneakers that I did sell and a lot of the times it's so funny, man. I'll say this. And like at the time, like you're like, oh man, like I sold some sneakers. And I just, I just walked away with like $1,200. And I'm like, yeah. And then, you know, sometimes like you'd be like, damn, I really, why did I sell those? Like, you know what I mean? Cause it's for that, like that quick little cash. And it's like, it's, it's interesting. It's an interesting moral. It's like, it's a real interesting, uh, you know, it's an interesting like dilemma sometimes. Yeah, as a, a sneaker person. So, does the money does the money feel different to you? I know sometimes when I sell sneakers, the money that I get, even if it's a lot of money, like if I get like I think the most I ever sold a pair of sneakers for was uh, nine hundred dollars, something like that. Yeah, almost almost a thousand. Mm-hmm. And I almost felt like I had to use it for sneakers. Like I sold De La Soul highs, right? Mm-hmm. And I almost felt like I had to. Like I had to use it for other kicks. Like I don't know, as like you know, a tribute. <laughs> you yeah, you threw, you threw it into the pot of evil. You have to pull something out of it. Yeah, I feel you. And, and unless unless you like, all right, listen, I got you know nine hundred more dollars, so I can cop this Camry because I really need to you know drive around or do whatever. Like it's all on what you whatever. You That's just do. super. Cars are just super fast shoes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's funny. I mean, maybe um, I think as I've, I think, and I've, I've told Luke this, I think in the last like maybe year or so that I've, I've now finally gotten into the, because the way the game is set up where 
if I sell something that I have, I'll use that to buy something. Yeah. So like I'll sell I'll sell a hoodie to buy a pair of sneakers that I missed out on. I'll sell some sneakers that I, you know, I, that, but that's that mentality five years ago, or even, you know, or two, even three years ago, you know, I, I never had that. It was always like, I'm selling this because, all right, I want to, I want to fund a, a vacation or I want to fund, you know what I'm saying? Or like, mm-hmm. I, like, I, you know, I've, I've, I remember I, I had, I sold sneakers when I didn't have a, a job where I wasn't, you know, coming or I wasn't making money and I flip shit, you know what I mean? Like, but I, but now I don't think like that, that, like that thrill sometimes, like you're like, oh, I'm selling these and I made 500. It doesn't always, like, it doesn't hit that way. It doesn't, it's like whatever. Cause that money's gonna, you're gonna get the money. The money's gonna come. Like you're gonna have money. Like we're adults, like we'll figure it out. You understand what I'm saying? But like, yeah. I don't know. I think that's 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 the problem that a lot of people like in this industry have. Like where we we get attached to a pair of sneakers, and maybe we shouldn't. Maybe we should. Some people look at it. Some people are able to look at it like, like how I hate to say it like this because this is like, but like how a sex worker may look at like you know working you know it's like whatever it's a fucking job making money. You understand what I'm saying? There's no yeah. there's no attachment to it. And a lot of times we get. Some of us, we do have an attachment to these things. Like, oh, I can't let these things go. I got a story behind them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's true. I mean, I, it's, as long as your storage, your storage uh, situation is good. Because for me, I'm like, once, I, once the collection gets past 80, it becomes unmanageable. Like, I think it's another thing, too. So yeah. it's like, you know, for all you hoarders out there, yo, man, just... Mm-hmm. You only got two feet, buddy. Go, go, yeah, go for quality. Because you're going to really end up just like... A lot of shoes, like I, dude, I, I gotta work from home now, especially. Like I've, I've, I just haven't got a chance to wear, you know what I'm saying? My, yeah. my, and I waited for these so long to come back out in, in like in a, in a better version, and I'm wearing them around my house because like the, otherwise mm-hmm. they wouldn't even, you yeah, know they, what I mean? Get any kind of, and, and they wouldn't have made it out of the box. So it's like, mm-hmm. you know, I have four pairs of shoes that I, I usually, I mean, I miss getting a, you get a pair of shoes and it's on the toe immediately. Yeah, man, I got four pairs of shoes that I haven't even worn outside. Dog, I got the I got the Union Zoom ninety twos, and I'm just I I just keep looking at them, and I'm just like, yeah, one of these days I'm gonna wear you. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, one of these. Yeah, days. it's one, of, and I think that's what it is too. I think that that that's the thing that we because there's so many releases in a year and if you kind of don't really like tell yourself all right you can only get but so many you like you said you'll see something like oh i need those and then oh man then and then what happens a lot of times you know motherfuckers go on like the sneakers app or whatever just for the thrill of it you know what i'm saying just to see (laughs) that got them shit you know what i mean i see a lot of my (laughs) friends do that no seriously I think bro, I, mean, I know I'm one of those friends, bro. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I did that for the Ruhan Wang cop. I was like, they're kind of good, and I, I was like, wanna, I saw that. Feel something right now. <laughs> honestly, I, I honestly I wanted to know. I I wanted to keep. I try for sneakers every time because I'm like, I just want to know if it's possible. It's almost like the lottery. It's like, yeah. is this a scam? Is this really? And then that's what they, they basically they they lotteried the sneaker game in, in or like a casino. Mm-hmm, uh, yeah. like you know you just like try, you're, you're gambling and just trying to win but it's like you know you're not really costing anything it's like you just mm-hmm. it's, it's not it's not like putting money in a slot machine but you know it is that element of like and then when I when I saw it I was like whoa okay so it is possible to get this so now maybe mm-hmm. for those future releases I'm still gonna try they know they know they got yeah. me they know mm-hmm. they got me mm-hmm. and I'm, mm-hmm. I'm I'm not too I'm not too too proud to admit that I'm a little bit of an addict <laughs> you know it is what it is some people some people drink too much. I understand. You got 80 pairs of sneakers. That's all. I understand, man. Um, listen, I want to I, I, I wanna kind of change gears for, uh, and talk about this, too, because I thought this was really uh, – this was interesting to me. And, uh, so we got Kanye. He's always going on his rants and shit. Holy shit. <laughs> and, uh, and I think it was, like, Thursday he goes on his rant. Like, if you know, until I'm on the board of what, directors at Adidas – like I'm wearing Jordans. Like, I'm, <laughs> like, <clears throat> yo, I love this. <laughs> this is fantastic. I love this so much. I'm not releasing nothing on Gap till I'm on the board. I'm wearing Jordans till I'm on the board of Adidas. I thought it. I, I thought it was so funny, man. Because yeah. we look at. I look at Kanye, and I'm always like, 
in terms of like fashion and I look at Kanye and I feel like his obviously when he was at his like height in terms of being like influenced in terms of like what people would see on his feet and you know what he was wearing it was when he's when he's with Nike like when he was a Nike guy you know yeah. you would you would see him whether it was a pair of aqua eights that you know I remember he wore aquas I remember you know do wore black cement threes on the all of the lights video and you know it and and there's just you know whether it was the Yeezys, the, it, he's always so to see him in the deed has always kind of tripped me out. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. And, then, and when I saw him wearing the uh, the court purple uh, Jordan ones, I just had a laugh to myself because I was like, I guarantee you, everyone who has like who bought those to flip those are like hoping that he has some type of Travis Scott pull. Like he just they hoped that it's like all right, let's see, let hopefully these shits go to the moon now that Kanye has worn them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I, did, did you guys see that, that, uh, that, I don't know if you guys talked about it, but that, that interview with him and Nick Cannon, it's funny because I have my other, you know, shoe, shoe head friends and I talk to them. I'm like, and in, with all the Yeezy and Adidas stuff, and I was always talking to them like, yo, you know, Kanye secretly really wants to wear Nikes. Like, he loves Nikes. Like he known this, and like him, him confirming it in that mm-hmm. interview where he's just like, "Yeah, man, that's like a black man not wearing Jordans." Like, come on, like no yeah. Jordans. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, mm-hmm. "Yo, I bet." And I, I always, I always thought about it. Like, I bet you he really wishes he could wear Jordans, like, because he loves. I mean, his first shoe, you know, took elements from the Jays, like did whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, it did it through the Air Revolution, but you know, is is clear elements from the Jays, clear inspiration. He's always wearing them on stage. That yo, know, and he's from the shot. Mm-hmm. That's important yeah. to him. You know what I mean? That's important. Like, like, come on. Like, imagine if I can't even. I can't even. I don't even know if there's a parallel for New York. Like, for for for, for some here. When I mean, New York is shoe culture is big, but shoe culture was Jordan's for us, and we was even from Chicago. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, yo, man, yeah, man. That's this to me is a long shot, but yo, imagine if he could pull it off. A collab. <laughs> yeah, he wants to do a collab well, with Adidas just... and Nike, which would be nuts. Yes. I, um, I think it's going to be three swooshes sideways yeah. in a stripe formation. That shit would be hot. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's happening, you know. But no, I, think I, don't think they would, I don't think they ever would do that. No. No, that's not going to happen. I think, they, those, I think I seriously think the people at Nike see that the three stripes logo and they go, that is shit. Like, like, yeah, they they really don't like them. I think they're like they're trained in orientation, like Clockwork Orange style. So now here's another question I want to ask you guys because this is kind of uh, you know I know Kanye has arguably the biggest line at Adidas, mm-hmm. and to see a, a guy who has the biggest line at Adidas, where obviously they're they're a competitor's brand. Do you think that this is going to cause major issues that Adidas with Kanye. Oof. That is, what a, what a conundrum. Man. On one hand, you got a dude that just brought you like a billion dollars or something like that. Like, you know, like, like got a lot of awareness to your brand. And then on the other hand, you know I mean? It's like, that's, I don't know, you look like a cuck. <laughs> I, think, like, I think Kanye is trying to get out of his Adidas contract and trying to just make Yeezy its own brand completely. Like, the only reason I think that is because, like, I don't, like, if you look at the jobs, like, if you look at, like, the easy, like, career page, it's all out in Wyoming. So, like, I don't think it, like, I don't see it as an impossibility that, like, they would try, like, he would just try to do something like that. Like, he's, he's crazy, like, he's crazy enough where he would do something like that, where he'd be like, all right, we've got the, we figured out how to do it. Maybe mm-hmm. we would just take this, take the show on the road, you know, which is why he's, like, stirring up controversy to begin with. Or he may just really want to work with another Nike shoe. I th- I think I, I I don't know, man. I think that uh, him he needs to be partnered with a, with another brand. Um, yeah. I mean, we've we've seen Yeezy on his like independent ventures before, and they, they pretty much fall flat. Yeah. Um, like people people love his like influ- like you know his his kind of like his input. 
on, on a brand, but the application of it, I don't think anybody really trusts him <laughs> with it. <laughs> yeah. Like all the way. They're like, all right, He's I'm gonna like, send you these colorways. I really love <laughs> y'all make them. Ah, my house, I'm crazy. You know, like I'm a genius. I made these shoes out of seaweed. <laughs> yeah, like you know, it's like eh. yeah. I think I think uh, I think that's the thing with Kanye. I think he as as uh, and you know, I, I don't like to use that. I use him as a musical genius, but as as smart as he is, I think, and I don't think him being alone. I don't think nothing would, I don't think like he, he would, I think it would falter. Like you said, I yeah, yeah. like, I see, I see where you're coming from for sure. Like I was just was, throwing it out there. That could be what yeah. he's thinking. No, I look, I understand what you're saying, but like you said, I mean, I think, you know, I, he needs like an Adidas, like he needs the, the, the Nike. I, I feel like he, yeah. him on his own, it just would be, we wouldn't, a, a never ending supply of never releases and you know what I mean oh, it's yeah. like it'd be like the rap albums he's been promoting. So Yeah. Could you imagine that? Three fifty he'd be like three fifties coming out next week <laughs> for the I next know, three and, years. And it wouldn't even come out. So I think that's I think he definitely needs someone to kind of, you know, uh guide him. Um I, I but I we we gotta see what the Kanye influence is with the uh with the Jordan ones because the motherfucking main influencer of 2020 is out here uh, dropping album and songs with with my guy Thugger. Uh, Trav dropped what franchise on Friday? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we uh, did you guys like the song or? I liked it. I haven't really gotten a chance to listen to it yet. Really? Okay. I was away. Uh, I was away on vacation for the past for the weekend, so I was like, I I kind of stepped away from the world. I was uh, it was rocking on my bike this weekend when I was riding around doing comedy. Uh, Shit was hype. I was. It was. I, it was. It got me. You know, it was a, little, it was a good little pregame. I mean, <laughs> I, I I fuck I, I fuck with Travis though. Like yeah. Travis is like probably one of the only rappers of the younger school that I'm like, yeah, I I I, I fuck with it. Like he, he uses a lot of elements from all of the rap that I do love, mm -hmm. which I think is a dope thing. You know what I'm saying? Like the fact that Sicko Mode has like uh, a Luke and Biggie sample in it. And it's like three songs, you know, like yeah. he's a real, he's a real trippy dude that, and, and, you know, that comes along every once in a while. We need that. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely, like I said, I think uh, he's like, he's another rapper. Like I, I feel like he had his 2020 has been like, he's pandemic or not. He's still getting the money. Yeah. And, uh, he just uh he has uh well, him and McDonald's they collab they what well, they did an action figure yeah a limited, oh. like, action five figures. there's gonna be five of them five yeah. five. five the raffle ended this morning Dude, oh wow could you, could you imagine could you imagine like if you're one of the like what the, that's like that's like hitting a lotto yeah mm -hmm. that's crazy. Yeah, no, I think it's uh, it's it's insane, and, and uh, so we got five action figures. Also, we saw that uh, you know, he put on he had a post on Instagram where he had a pair of an, another pair of uh, Travis Scott Air Jordan One, uh, looked like a a white uh, back round. It looked they they looked a little weird. It's like alternate. Uh, yeah, I hate them. You don't like them. Hey, okay. Um. From the side silhouette, they look nice. When you see in the video and it's up top, I don't know, man. I don't know if I like this like reverse white situation going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. I don't I don't like them at all. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. It's, oof. These it are gonna just... these are gonna be slightly more I think these are gonna be uh slightly more comparable than the than the first iteration well i mean you know we, we we've been teased with a lot of different travis scott's that haven't come out so let's not yeah sit here and be like these are coming out i did see uh there was a another pair of uh jordan sixes that were teased uh by bloody osiris had uh he was wearing them uh yeah. so let me pull those up let's see is it the yellow pair? No. Uh, I think it, it's uh, it's like a – if you go to Bloody Osiris' Instagram, he had a pair of them. They were um, – uh, 
what's the I, I, not tan, but they were like a. Oh yeah, I see him. Hold on, it's like uh like a kind of a coffee color. Yeah, like a coffee. Like these guys. Yeah. yeah. Mhm. These are nuts. I like these. I want. Yeah, those are really nice. With like those are almost accent. almost like the the rose. Yeah, it's almost like the coral um sixes that came out not too long ago mm-hmm. with the infrared. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of it kind of vibe. I like them. I like these. Not against it. I would definitely. Ch- I would try to jump out a window for those if um if they drop. The other ones, not so much. Hmm. Is that the consensus? Yeah, I mean, like I said, I, we have to see more of them on, on you know, and I think better shots. We saw mm-hmm. it in the dark room. But, uh, yeah, I think those, uh, I mean, like I said, those sixes released in 2021 or we get another pair, another Jordan 1. Who knows, man? Who knows? Another, another, uh, another chance at an L. That's what I see. Another chance at an L, man. We, speaking of L's, man, you know, SB dunk L's are just continuing. Yeah. Uh, we had the Michigans uh, and the Michigan States uh, mm-hmm. this, this past week. I believe the Michigans were, uh, I think, Wednesday, if I'm correct. Yes. Uh, I tried. I tried. I failed. We all yeah. did. <laughs> we all did. Uh, <laughs> We have uh, we have the uh, the Atlas Lost at Sea uh, SBs are there. Uh, I believe they're uh, coming out this week. Or yeah, their raffle was this is this week. I believe right. Well, it, I guess the the actual at, at the Atlas store they did an online raffle, um, and then I guess the wider release. I don't know if these I don't think these are hidden sneakers at, but uh, they have an escape shop raffle or. I believe on October second. So. October second, yeah. These are these are nice, man. These are. I went. I went a little crazy with the, because you did the raffle too. The nationwide joint. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Did you put in for Mad Merch too? I put in for merch. Yeah. I put I in for put some in. merch too. I got a little reckless with it. I got. I was starting to sweat as I was leaving the checkout line, where they're like, "Are you? If you win these, you got to buy them. You know that, right?" <laughs> yeah. No, I, I I saw that. Yeah. I was I went a little crazy with like the hoodies and all that shit. I really like these shoes, man. They're yeah, really nice. I'm. I'm a. I like those. Uh, I I think you know they're they're plain, but I think when you get to the details of the shoe, I think that's what uh, you know. Yeah. yeah, I dig them. I I like the I like the cream laces. Uh, with the uh against that with that that the cream midsole. Yes, I think mm-hmm. I think it's uh it gives it a real interesting look. The Tongue branding is nice too. Yeah, is that a an air? That's like an Air Force, uh, two. What is that? What is that like? That print. Uh, I wish I wish Chris was here for this. <laughs> what? Well, oh, because Chris is the Air Force two guy, right? Like, really no, he would just. Two. He knows all the designs. Like he knows all the like the the letter blocking and all that. Because I know they pulled it from some other shoe. It's very like it's on the tip of my tongue. I've seen. Oh, it that's a, that's the. Uh, Flight, that looks like Flight 89. The Flight 89. Oh, Flight 89. Yeah, yes. Flight 89. Yeah. yeah, that's the but, Flight 89 font. But yeah, that's uh, that's pretty. I like that choice. We saw, I mean, those were, I, we saw these highs. Then we also saw that, uh, we saw, I think, a first look at Concept. Uh, oh, yeah. Highs. You know, more SBs. I just feel, I mean, like I said, we, we talk about it, it feels like every week on this fucking podcast. But, I mean, they are, like, just like legit like lacing us with sbs every every week bro it's i find it so funny that they are at this point because when i first came on the show i was begging for sbs now i'm just like please make it stop i'm sorry i'm Mm -hmm. sorry i'll never question nike again (laughs) those i ain't gonna front those are sick though no they're nice they're nice shoes it's just like i just wish they i i just wish they wouldn't give a like hand out so many l's you know? Oh my God, those are those are extremely uh yeah those are really nice. So when I when I immediately saw them, I was like, you know, just uh yeah, well done. Uh, you know, can't wait to take a loss there. Yeah, some good shit though. So since since Nike seems to be um like hinging on scarcity, just to like I I don't know if it's to keep themselves relevant or to just like. Or just to get so many people talking about it, but talking about the brand in general, mm-hmm. because you know it's a it's a it's a tried and true like strategy that works. 
Uh, mm-hmm. If somebody can't get that, they're going to get something else. They're going to be mm-hmm. like, oh, they're going to find out about it, and then they're going to just go to Foot Locker and cop just something, anything. Like, sneakerheads are making up 8% of the market. Like, all we, all we are is hype machines. Mm-hmm. So, like, do, I don't know. I've personally, have you feel like, do, is it affected the what you like, like, what you like and what you're actually going for? Or have you just like trying to figure out a way to like cop what you cop the stuff that you want, even though, you know, you got to end up doing resale and stuff like that. Like, how do y'all feel about that? Uh, it definitely makes me go outside of the box more. Cause like, I'll, I'll see like, like I'll look at like the grateful dead, like the yellows I really wanted. Right. And then I couldn't get them. So I have to like, look at different aspects of like, what, sh- what part of these shoes do I like? And then I'll try to find some of those elements in another shoe you know, entirely like a completely different shoe. Like I like, uh, like the medicine balls. I, I, I got the, uh, the air trainer three, the, the medicine balls. And I like those a lot because of like, just like the colors, like the tans. And obviously there's like a, a lot of history behind the shoe itself. Uh, Oh, but you didn't want to buy mine when I was selling mine. You were like selling, Oh, uh, which one? The Viotex? No. <laughs> you had the medicine balls. Yeah, man. I don't remember that. I thought you were selling you were selling the Viotex. No, we wear the same size, Luke. Come on, man. I'm fucking up. Drop the ball. I'm right, fucking anyway. up. So, somebody bought them anyway, but I'm just saying. I'm just yeah. I'm a bad friend. That's what it is. <laughs> but still, it's like it makes you go outside the box. It makes you think about like what you like about shoes, and uh, try to find something else as an alternative. You know. I, I, as the as the richest hype beast on this podcast, uh, what about you? Are you are you, just, <laughs> are you just like nah, man? I'm gonna find a way to get it. It depends on the sneaker. I mean, right now, I really I, I try not to do that because I mean, you know, you you be like, oh man, I gotta get, I gotta figure out a way to get these, and then like a month later, you be like, oh man, I gotta figure out a way to get these. Like it, it, it's too many. I gotta figure out the ways, and you, you don't want to do that because that's how you get yourself caught up. Uh, for the most part, I mean, I've been like, I've been pretty good this year in terms of like, if I don't get it's whatever there has been like, maybe I think there's two sneakers that I figured out a way to get somehow, some way. Mm-hmm. But other than that, like, I, I don't, I'm not, mm-mm. no way, buddy, you fucking, you'll lose your mind trying to do that, man. If you miss out. I think you just got to go to the next one. Mm. Mm. I think that, I mean, honestly, I think that's the, I think that's the, the honest, uh, way, unless, like I said, unless you, unless you have this intuition about a sneaker. And when I say that, like, there's been times, and I, I think I talk about this on the podcast a lot where my intuition says, damn, you should figure out a way to get. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, ah, Lawrence, don't do it. And then a year later, the shoe is five times what it was the year before. So I have that with two sneakers. Mm-hmm. I have that with like the the Mars Yard, where I was like, I could have, you know, flipped something and then paid the six hundred for them, and just like I could have flipped shit and moved things around, but I didn't because I was like, ah. And then you know, a couple years later, they're sitting at in my size like five k. So I was like, all right, you know, you you, you get you kind of like fuck. And then my other one is the Union ones, like uh, where I was yeah. like, I had I had one fantasy football league. I had some extra bread. I was like, treat yourself, but I didn't. And they were like five fifty. And then next thing you know, now that same size is three K. So it's kinda like, you know, I don't I'm not I'm not the biggest fan of doing it because I feel like you'll do it, you know, if if you train yourself, you'll be like, Well, I can, you know, you start doing it more than you should. But then there's certain situations where it's like, oh man, you know. You gotta you figure it out. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, Chris Chris sends his regards. Uh, yes. So, you know, just wanted to say that. So yeah, he's uh, he's currently locked up in a maximum pr- uh, security prison. He did some well, shit. He better yeah. go, if he goes to that factory store. He better bring me something nice. Yes. <laughs> he was trying to rob the factory store. <laughs> Dude, hilarious. But doesn't he doesn't he have access to the employee store? Has he gone there? He, Chris has been in the employee store, right? Yes, yes, so yes, he, has. he said he said that the employee store is not, you know, it, it, you can find better deals, you know. At the outlets. Well, what? Like, well stock <clears> X, stock like, X too, yeah. 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 It depends. It depends on the uh the time of year, is from what I hear. 
So if you if you get if you just are in between some a good release calendar, it's mm -hmm. not necessarily the prices, but it's what's available. Yes. Like there'll be there'll be there'll be like some dope stuff that's available that just like you have to pay higher resale for. Yeah. But like, it'll like, just kind of be like, you know. Like Scar's uh Air, Scar's Pizza Air Force Ones, like you'll just find them at the end. Oh they, yeah, they yeah, they got those in the bathroom. Yeah, they got them in the bathroom. <laughs> Biggie, man. We don't care about those. <laughs> Put out another yeah. pair. Somebody found them. All right, speaking of outlet stuff that you now you'll never find out outlet stuff, uh Kobe Bryant uh sneakers. I mean, I'm you know, I, I'm sure a few years ago you can find some Kobe mm -hmm. fours, Kobe, you know, five, whatever. You know, I'm sure you can find some, you know, under retail. And now it's just a mad dash for any Kobe sneaker. I mean, we've seen uh the DeMar DeRozan player edition. A lot of dudes are getting player editions uh, that are releasing. PJ Tucker had a very, I think it was well well executed. Yep. The public seemed like they weren't feeling it until it released and then they sold out everyone was like oh i want them shits but yeah um we're there's uh obviously the bruce lees that are everyone's you know waiting for um and then we have the um i saw the five rings yes that are going to get a release and it's interesting when, you, when we're looking at the uh the nba bubble we're just seeing players just getting kobe fives like left and right and we're seeing so many wonderful uh player additions did you guys try to get those uh, PJ Tuckers? I did not. I did not like them, so I just didn't even bother. Yeah, you know, I tried to get. So I try. Me and Kobe got the same birthday. I tried to get birthday Kobe's on uh, on the the ones that released on A twenty three. Um. So I think that was a, the, that's what the ones they nicknamed the five rings. I think that was those. No, those weren't the no. five rings. Those were no. the big stage. The big, big stage, stage, right? Big stage. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for eight. Yeah. And and as you can tell, I'm not a person who's into Kobe's. I never was before. Mm -hmm. um, I thought, you know, since my birthday, maybe I might try on sneakers. You know what I'm saying? But like, mm -hmm. and I went for it. But I, yeah, I just it's it's more. It already passed that era where it was like more of so much of a basketball shoe. It mm -hmm. really just like it really. I I never was really feeling it on the lifestyle side of just like a, a dope shoe to cop. So man, I wasn't really, I wasn't really like um, going with the code, and it, it's it makes you kind of cringe, you know what I'm saying? Like at the fact that like all of these, you know, uh, we know because Nike originally what they pulled all the Kobe's that they had on the all, on the website, yeah, um, initially. But then you see them, you know, not even not even a year into his passing, and like now these all these releases are coming out, and they're just as limited, and people who really love Kobe can't get them. It's like to me, it's a little cringe um, on, on on Nike's part. And it's like, we never know. We don't know what the real demand is for sneakers because mm -hmm. everything on an app is just going to sell out. So I, we, no one really knows. Yeah. I, you know, I wonder, and honestly, you know, I have to, I'm going to, what I'm going to do after we get off this podcast, I'm going to check my, uh, my eyeball, the, the Kobe 5 eyeballs. And I want to see the production date on those because I want to know how much did, you know, how much did, were these produced before he passed or you know what i'm saying if they were because they were produced before he passed then then obviously the original goal was to be limited as fuck anyway you know what i'm saying but if they were produced during or after um and i wonder like you know how much did COVID, how much does COVID play a role in how, how much these are how mass produced these sneakers can be but i will say that yes um there, Isaiah, I agree with you to a certain, to a really good point where I remember when Kobe sneakers or just bas Nike basketball in general were lifestyle sneakers. Like you would wear a pair of LeBrons mm -hmm. or KDs, you know, like to the club. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you would wear like, you know, South Beach 8s weren't just basketball sneakers. Those were fucking the lifestyle of lifestyle shoes. Phone posits, lifestyle shoes. You know the the LeBron eights nines, like you know the Kobe the the uh, what was it? I think it was the Kobe nines, the high top joints, the one the ones where he wore. Yeah, the, the he came league. back yeah. after he tore his Achilles, and he he started he wore the 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 fly knit joints or the the sock knit or whatever they were, and those were people wore those, and now we got the gradual shift back to work where those are basketball sneakers. You know, you, you wear them yeah. for for hoops. Yeah, if you look at the the new LeBrons too, they're very much 
these are basketball shoes. These are meant for basketball. You're going to play basketball in them, and you're not going to do anything else in them. And they also look like Charmin quilted puffy on the side. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think, I think now we got to that point. We're at that stage where basketball sneakers look like basketball sneakers. Yeah. If that makes sense. Like, they don't look like lifestyle sneakers. They look like they got this full air zoom unit, you know, forefront feet cushioning, you yeah. know, design. Like, it's not like, it's not just a, you know, a, a Jordan one, or it's not just, you know, it's, it, it's, it's designed for intense, like basketball. Yes. yes. But, ha- but hasn't Nike always dictated to us though, what a basketball sneaker looks like. And then the streets decide really, I mean, because I mean, I, even with Adidas, all of their like, like big hits with the, like shell toes and stuff like that. Like, none of those were even trying to pass off as performance shoes. Like Nike always had performance shoes that were like heralded as like, like Barclays, like mm-hmm. Barclays back in the day. It was like, oh, this is a dope performance shoe. But then also it, 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 it translated the in, in the streets with the lifestyle too. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I feel like that's kind of the, the first time I saw it happen in life was that, LeBron era of like seven, eight, nine, where mm-hmm. it was like, where I was actually looking at these, like, yo, yeah, those are bad. Cause when I was a kid, looks, I, they look like a piece of technology. Yeah, they definitely look like a basketball shoe, but people still, fuck, like the cannons, yeah. people still fucked with them, the cannons, the South Beach, like, th- so those, those colorways and stuff like that. So people really were deciding. I just don't think that these, like, late, these late LeBrons and these, these recent Nike basketball shoes. Um, they just don't got no swag. Like, even look Whoa. at look at look at the Jordan look at the Jordan designs from like the thirties, the, the 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 you know the late twenties and the thirties. It's like yeah. Well, I think that's what it, I mean. That's what it is. I think you know we we used to we used to wear those type like Jordan. You know, even like this. I can remember the sixteen, seventeen. Like they were cool ball sneakers, but you wore those like on some like yo these shits are like fire. And, and like you said, I mean, you're not wearing a pair of Giannis Greek Freak ones just to, you know, to chill. You know what I mean? It's like that's like you wear those the hoop. Like I, I buy like sneakers to play ball in. Like that's mm-hmm. what I do. Like I, you know, so it's like, and and then you, you have sneakers that you're like, I would never play ball in these. You know what I'm saying? These are what these are. Boom! These are my stunt sneakers or whatever you want to call them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think my, my, my point with the Kobe's is it, it feels like I don't, I don't see too many people legit like, yo, I'm trying to, like, I, that's what I'm trying to figure out who, who's buying these. Are these legit basketball, like, people? Because, like, like, when I tell people, oh, yeah, I got a pair of Kobe's, they're like, well, you got them to hooping, right? And I'm like, an apartment is like, ah, you know what I mean? But then, like you said, Isaiah, it's like the whole, like, I'm, I'm yeah. not wearing these, like, to fucking, I'm not wearing, where am I going in these? Yeah. I think it was for, uh, it's for the collectors. The collectors are, 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 when it comes to anything Kobe now, mm-hmm. um, I, think, I think it really is collectors and people going for cash grabs. It's probably, yeah. That's probably safe to say that that's what it is with them. Because you can't even fit jeans around them, bro. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, like, come on, man. The, those are sweatpants, like, you know, or short sneakers, you know? The mm-hmm. tech, yeah, you got you to have one. You got to have that. It's a tech pants. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So... I don't know, guys. Tech Boy Special. Do you want to talk about um, rubber dunks real quick and call it an episode? Sure. I think so. All right. So we talked about a couple months ago, pre-COVID, the the off-white rubberized dunks. We have uh, they're finally coming out now uh, in October first, I believe. Uh, but obviously, with Virgil, there's always a catch. And every there's only going to be they're going to be separated by region. Uh, the blue and white pair, the milk crate kind of pair, is uh, going to the to Europe. The gold and yellow pair is going to Asia, and we are getting the uh, the green and black pair, the glow in the dark energy pair. Mm. How do we feel? <sighs> I hate when I like a Virgil sneaker. I hate yeah. it so much. I like the um, I like the universe uh, the the blue and the and the white ones. Those are the uh, my favorites personally. But 
I guess we got we got the greens. I'm not mad at the blue and white or the greens. Um, mm-hmm. The gold actually looks really cool. I know. I mean, I know. I know. L. I, I'm gonna guess which one. L. I think L. L's fucking with the gold joints. No, honestly, no. I think the black and green are, are like the ones I like, or the yeah. the the university blue. Yeah. Um, I don't know. If, I mean, when do they come out? They come out October first. Gotcha. So well, they'll a few be available days. on sneakers. Let's see. What do you think this is going to have a crazy resale or is this going to be like kind of like uh cuz G- Virgil's releases as of late besides those fives uh were pretty low. Oh, the fours too, but like you know what I mean? Like those uh the vapor but he had like vapor a run of like, the, the vapor, yeah. streets, the vapor waffles. No. He had like a run of like shoes that didn't really go for much extra. Well, those were also models that nobody really I mean yeah, this is a reimagined model, but it's still going to have that dunk name attached to it. Mm-hmm. And I wish these were called anything but a dunk. And they'd probably be a little more attainable to get or le- at least a little less on the resale um, market. Oof. But, yeah. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. I think the fact that they have the, the name dunk attached to them, I think that right there is going to be an indicator of how Kiss uh, of tough, right yeah, how tough these are going to be. Yep. Oof. Yeah, man, look at that gold pair, though. Man, that's it's, a, it's flat. That is a yellow and gold pair for sure. That is, a, that is what bright. A, what a sneaker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, but I think, you know what? Uh, uh, I think I think Elle's right. That black and green probably is. And again, it's something that I would, like, I, would, I wouldn't pay more than 200 bucks for it. Like, I don't think they're that extraordinary. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, you know. 200 bucks i guess and and the extra money i don't even know how much they're retailing for seems like what it seems like a 150 dollars shoe yeah um mm-hmm. but but i i don't know i don't know how great they are like you know i, I more than, i can't see myself paying more than 200 dollars for that shoe I mean, I guess the extra the extra over retail I would think is worth it is because a lot of people maybe won't have it. You'll be a little more unique, mm-hmm. but that's about it. It's a cool, it's a cool shoe. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm not really like I said. It's not. I'm gonna like be like, oh man, I have to have. You know, this is not. This is not game day. This is not gonna be a game day, Lawrence. This is not six o'clock in the morning, Lawrence. No, not at all. Lawrence is gonna roll out of bed maybe. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, if, and if I get him, I get him. If not, I, then not. You heard that? Yeah, last that Chris uh, slept on the fragment threes, like literally slept on his fragment threes. Yeah, you read oh. that, Isaiah? Yeah, dude. Uh, yeah, I guess good for him because, like, he. I, I don't. I don't. I just don't. I don't get the whole fragment thing. I just don't. I, I like a stamp, and then it. You know, I Lawrence. I know you like him too. I just don't. Listen, Plus, those threes, uh, it just looks like a Concord trying to like be reimagined, like a three lab Concord, like reimagined on it. And I, I'm pretty sure the materials are great and fine, but mm-hmm. I don't know. That's my opinion. I, I just, I, I just know that if that was a GR, man, no one, that would go, that would be at the outlets. Those, those would be at the outlets if they, if they didn't have, uh, right, stamp stamp on. yeah. Okay. Fair. I'll give you that argument. That is a argument to have. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not against them. I'm not against them. I just don't. Uh, they they really don't affect me in any way. Yeah, I don't think I don't I I I don't think they're offensive. Yeah. I just I just uh, you know for the for the for the amount of hype and money you know it's something that goes along mm, yeah. with it. But you know. Yeah. Part of that might be going that like Asia kind of kind of tells us what's cool. Yeah, we do. Well, I think, I think it, well, I think, uh, well, the pair, the the uh, the pairs on the aftermarket definitely dip, but I think what it is is I think his name just carries enough weight in terms of what he's done in the past collabs to make these, um, make people spend you know money for them if that makes sense. So it's like he's ha- you know obviously what happens is his his biggest you know sneaker in my opinion is the Jordan One that he did. So I think when people see the name Fragment attached and they see how much those are going for, then I think they start saying, all right, you know, 
it's a it's a three, which is obviously I think a top three or four model that you know Jordan Brand has. And if you attach the name Fragment to it, and and you know some people will are super fanboys, just like with Virgil or you know Don C or anyone that's done a collab with you know Nike, you know you have your people who want them. So um, right now, I mean, like I said, I mean they're you know they're in the five hundreds. I mean, I honestly, I mean, I can see these in six months to a year being easily eight nine hundred dollars mm-hmm. easily you know i, I, I feel I, I totally see it. it's a fragment it's gonna like i said the the value on them is gonna go up now is that shoe i would i i i wouldn't um if i didn't get them for retail i'm not gonna you know no go hard, i'm not gonna try anything higher than retail for those there you go all right and with Isaiah, that being said yeah go ahead finish oh, no, it up. I was going to say, I just want to thank you, Isaiah, for coming along. Uh, you know, give, give everyone your social media. Oh, yeah, man. You used to check out some of the drip on my Instagram, F-L-Y-S-A-I-A-H. You know what I'm saying? Got some, got some a lot of footscapes on there for y'all. Hell yeah. Twitter's, Twitter, same thing. And uh, that's it, basically. That's where I'm at. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, you know, we've got uh, at Trevisus on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, you can follow the podcast at Subpodcast NYC on all platforms. You can email us at Subpodcast NYC at gmail.com. Uh, you can leave us a, a, a message on our, on our voicemail. Uh, I don't know that one. That's going to be in the description. Uh, and join our Discord. Isaiah's in there. We talk a lot of shit. We've got a, a couple of conversations going at the same time. It's a lot of fun. There's memes and shit. Have a we're good buying, time. we're selling, we're mm-hmm. talking. There you go. And I'm I'm LZD three two five. Chris is not that cheney. Um, and with that being said, this has been a uh, sub podcast episode one thirty two. We will see you next week. Peace. Peace.